Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to choose the best dividend ETF for your portfolio. I'm gonna walk you through the research that I did to come to my favorite dividend ETF that really nobody seems to be talking about. And so I hope you find this video very useful and helpful in helping you pick the right dividend ETF for yourself. As part of my research, I watched some of the best dividend ETF videos on YouTube. And I hope that I can save you a lot of time by taking the best of what I learned and condensing it into this video. Right off the bat, I'll tell you that my favorite ETF is SCHV and the rest of this video will help explain exactly why. It's a solid ETF that in my opinion comes out ahead of VYM and VIG and those were the top contenders when I actually was starting my research. But just because I like SCHV doesn't necessarily mean that it may be the right one for you you may find a different ETF that's a better fit for your needs. And so really the point of this video is to give you a methodology or a roadmap, so to speak, so that you can come to your own conclusion. And after you watch till the end, let me know if you agree, if you disagree, if there's something I missed, just drop it down in the comments and let me know. And if you're new here, consider subscribing, consider hitting that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos on personal finance and investing. All right, there's a lot to cover, and so let's get right into it. So I'm gonna walk you through how I got to SCHV in three different steps. First, I'm gonna share with you exactly where and how I got my pool of dividend ETF candidates. Second step, I'm gonna share with you the seven attributes that I was looking at to rank order those ETFs that I selected. And then the third step, I'm gonna do a very deep dive qualitative analysis as to why I chose SCHV as opposed to some of the other top ranking ETF candidates. And so be sure to stick around till the very end because I think you'll find this really valuable. First, I listed all the dividend ETFs that were mentioned in some of the top YouTube videos to see which ones came up a lot. That gives me some sense that there is a consensus around the leading ETFs. Second, I looked at Google search and uh, look at some of the top dividend ETF articles to see which ones were mentioned frequently as well. Third, I looked at M1 Finance and picked out some additional candidates based on some very basic requirements that I'm gonna go over real quick. If you've never heard of M1 Finance, it's one of the best investing apps out there for specifically dividend investing. It's one of the easiest apps to use to really build a diversified dividend portfolio to both automate your investments and to automate your dividend reinvestments as well. It's both fee-free and commission-free and it's where I plan on building my new dividend portfolio. And if you want to try it out yourself, feel free to use a link down in the description below and you can get started with as little as $100. Going back to the ETF search, there are three screening requirements that I was specifically looking out for that are really important if you're thinking about investing for dividends. First, I was looking for ETFs specifically with qualified dividends. ETFs with dividends that are not qualifying or also known as ordinary dividends are going to be taxed at the higher tax rates uh, that are considered for earned income taxes. And so that's much less favorable compared to qualified dividends, which are going to be taxed at the capital gains tax rate, which are more favorable. If you want to know how to tell if a dividend is qualified or not qualified, you can really quickly go to ETFs.com and check under tax exposure. And typically real estate ETFs like VNQ from Vanguard are usually gonna have higher dividend yields, but the downside is you'll be paying more in taxes because it's not considered qualified. The second requirement I was looking for was dividend growth. And I didn't wanna just get any ETF that had a high dividend yield right now. I needed to see that dividend yield increase over time. And so I needed to see ETFs with a track record of growing their dividend. And to do this, I went to Seeking Alpha and for each ETF, I looked up and found its growth chart, its CAGR performance, and its years of growth. And I eliminated any ETF that showed inconsistent or stagnant growth ever since its start date. By the way, the CAGR is a compound annual growth rate and it's simply telling you how much the dividend has grown on an annual basis over that specific time frame. And so really what you wanna see here is positive numbers for the three, five, and 10 years. And I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a negative number for 2020 for many ETFs simply because of the whole crisis. The third requirement I was looking for was the inception date, as in when did the fund actually get started? And this is really important because the older the fund, the more established it is, and the more it's proven that it can withstand whatever the economy throws at it. But realistically speaking, if you look at the growth of ETFs since 1999, they're a pretty recent phenomenon and many of them didn't even exist a decade ago. My thoughts on this is that ideally any fund that had started prior to and survived the Great Recession and meets the other two requirements is definitely worth looking at at the next step. 
but I also think that there's also some funds that were created after 2010 that are also pretty good that I think are worth taking to the next step as well. But I left out any funds that were newer than 2015 because I thought that was just too short of a track record. Once I applied those three requirements on my pool of ETF candidates, I ended up with these eight ETFs that you're seeing on the spreadsheet. And so in this table, I'm gonna walk you through each of the seven attributes, how I ranked it, how I weighed it, and ultimately how I came up with SCH fee as my top e dividend ETF. So make sure you stick around till the very end because I wanna make sure that you are fully aware of what each of these attributes are and how you can use them and, and modify and use the data so that you can tailor to exactly what you're looking to, uh, what you're looking to do. And so the first one I wanna talk about here is the start date or the inception date. Uh, basically this one, I ranked it according to um, the, the fund that was established the most recent had the least number of points. Again, going back to what I previously said, I'm looking for funds, funds that have a proven track record. They're older, they're established. They've gone through a great recession. I gave them more points. And here you can see VTV at, was established back in 2004 in January. And so I'm assigning it eight points because that is the, one of the oldest funds I have of these eight. And I'm giving it a weighting of 10%. That's basically saying, you know, I think it matters to some extent, but not to some extent, but not a whole lot. The next one I'm looking at is the expense ratio. Uh, this is basically telling me how expensive is it to invest in this dividend ETF. And how you would read this would be if it's a 0.08% for DGRO right here, uh, it's basically telling me that for every $10,000 I invest into DGRO, that I'm paying $8 annually for, uh, for that fund. And so I, I wanna keep this as low as possible. As, as you can see, the weighting is at 30%. It does matter to me a lot. Uh, I do want to keep my expenses low so that I can I get to keep more of my money and not have to pay these um, the, the portfolio managers, so to speak. And so uh, for VTV and SCHV, they're 0.04% tied, and so I assigned four points to those. And for DGRO, it's at 0.08%, which is pretty high, relatively speaking, compared to VTV. Now, that may not matter to you, it's just like $4, it doesn't really make a difference. And so this is where you can adjust the weightings for your own needs and, and, and make sure that it meets your preferences for what you're looking for. The next one I'm looking at is the assets under management. Here, I sorted, if I sort by smallest to least here, uh, the, the smallest fund, the smallest fund is SPYD at $2.2 billion, while the largest fund is just over, uh, just under $58 billion, which is VTV. And this fund, the this fund size doesn't really matter too much to me. Uh, that there might be some issues with regards to liquidity. Uh, and when you're trying to sell or buy these funds. For me, I don't plan on doing a lot of active trading with these dividend ETFs. I plan on holding them for a while. And so I only assigned a weighting of 5%. Again, that might matter more to you. Uh, for me, I don't think it really makes that big a difference in terms of how big the fund itself is. The next one I'm looking at is the PE ratio. And if I sort it by smallest to least number of points, uh, the one uh, that the fund with the least uh, number of points is SCHV because it has the highest PE ratio of 30.54 out of these eight. Um, if you can compare, you can compare this to the S&P 500. Right now, the PE ratio for the S&P 500 stands at 36.66. That is the trailing 12 months of earnings. Uh, we can also look at the Schiller PE ratio of 33. And that's basically telling me that, yeah, these funds are cheaper than the S&P 500. Um, and that should be expected because the S&P 500 contains a lot of growth stocks like Amazon, Tesla, um, Netflix, a lot of these companies that are very growth oriented and their PE ratios are very high. Uh, whereas these dividend ETFs are more on the value side of companies. Uh, so like the Exxon Mobiles, the Procter & Gamble's, those that have matured and they're you know, giving out regular dividends there in a mature market. And so I'm expecting these to be lower. And so again, this is only 5%. I'm not giving a high weighting here because it doesn't really matter too much to me, but it's good for me to know that at least you know, these PE ratios are lower than what we're seeing from the S&P 500. The next one I'm looking at is the dividend yield. I think this is pretty straightforward. The lower the yield, the less points I'm assigning. So here VIG has the lowest yield at 1.63%. I'm just assigning it one point, whereas SPYD has a dividend yield of 4.8%, so I'm assigning it eight points. And this does matter to me a lot at 25% weighting. So uh, I do think that you know if I'm looking for a dividend ETF, I wanna maximize my dividend yield uh, as best as possible while seeing growth and making sure that every other attribute is consistent with what I'm looking for. The next one is the number of holdings here, and I'm just gonna sort it here. 
uh, the the fund with the smallest number of holdings, the the fewest companies in the basket of uh, in its in the basket is going to be HDV at 77, and I gave it with just one point. Whereas something like SCHV has 538 companies in its holdings, and so I'm assigning it eight points for that. I'm giving a weighting of 15% because I do want to see a diverse number of companies in my dividend ETF, and it helps reduce volatility. Make sure that uh, my risk is diversified in that holding. And somewhat related to that is the top 10 weightings, which is the next attribute here. And HDV comes at the highest at 56.92%. What's that basically telling me is that the top 10 companies basically make up 57% of that ETF. Whereas something like SPYD, there's uh, it's 15.38%. So the top 10 companies make up only about 16, just shy of 16% of the entire fund. And I do want to see that weighting low. I want to make sure that uh, the fund is diversified across many different companies and not one single company has a heavy influence in the direction of that ETF. And so after all that, uh, the scoring here, I basically multiplied the weightings by the number of points and then I added all those up to get the scoring. And if I sort by ranking here, uh, you can see the SCHV comes in with a score of 5.3. VYM comes with a score of 4.45, and then close behind that is VTV at 4.5. And so those are the top three that round out my rankings. These top three picks are solid choices, and you really can't go wrong with going with any one of them. But if I had to choose one, I would choose SCHV with VTV as a close second, and there's three reasons why. I think first, VYM is disadvantaged in how it screens for quality dividend companies compared to the other two. So VYM tracks a subset of high dividend paying companies that are part of the FTSE High Dividend Yield Index. It takes each company and their forecasted dividends for the next 12 months and keeps only those in the top 50% of that. And then it takes each company that makes the cut and adds them to the fund based on their market capitalization. Now, in my opinion, there's some problems with this approach. I'm not a big fan of using four looking dividends as the singular screening method. I don't think it's a very robust method in and of itself, and it's gonna allow for lower quality dividend paying companies to get into the fund. Companies with no profit can slip in, companies with high payout ratios can slip in as well, and there's no indicator of dividend sustainability making it easy for companies with just a really lucky set of dividend predictions to spoil the party. On the other hand, SCHV and VTV are, take a similar approach with two different indexes. So they both start with a large cap total market index that's subsetted for US companies and that's further subsetted for those, that, uh, those companies that exhibit value characteristics using different types of factor metrics. And these metrics help identify companies that are cheaper than their intrinsic value. And so therefore the argument is that their dividends are on stronger fundamentals based on the business. Basically they take a more refined approach while VYM takes the more brute force approach, and I think it could just be much more robust in its selection methodology. It just makes you feel underwhelmed in how they go about doing it. Between SCHV and VTV, my second reason as to why SCHV comes out ahead has to do with the fact that it has a higher yield with a larger pool of holdings. So there's less risk, but more reward. And I think this has to do with the slight differences in the indices they track and how they use the factor metrics to calculate and determine a value stock. And also SCHV is also more inclusive of borderline mid caps, which drive a higher yield compared to VTV. And because it holds a larger number of companies, the top 10 weighting for SCHV is only about 16.5% compared to VTV, which is north of 22%. So I like to see it lower just as a matter of preference. The third reason has to do with the post COVID world that we're going into. And I think with the widespread distribution of a vaccine, I have reasonable expectations that life will be back to normal. And I think real estate, commercial real estate is going to rebound and recover fast. Consumer demand for traveling and vacationing, eating out, going back to sports and entertainment, going back to the gym, going back to the office, these are all gonna be really beneficial for real estate companies who've been hit really hard by the pandemic. And I think all these factors position SCHV to be able to capitalize and take the most opportunity based on its sector concentration. Another thing is that the new Biden administration is gonna probably introduce policies that are gonna be 
uh, more scrutinizing of Wall Street and the big banks. And I think that scrutiny and that regulatory environment is going to put pressure on the financial sector, which in turn means that SCHV is least exposed compared to VYM and VTV. With all that being said though, I do think I could end up buying all three with a bigger position in SCHV. So I could take the 50, 25, 25 approach and diversify within my dividend ETF holdings in itself. And honestly, I do have a bias towards Vanguard. And if you've seen any of my index fund videos, you know that I really am a big fan of how the company is structured to benefit its clients who happen to be its owners. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button down below. I'd really appreciate it. And be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.